So here's where we get to the thing. Mm. It all started with one mention, the mention of Zionism in the same category as racism and Nazism. Mm -hmm. And it was an internal memo for the Governance Council of Minority Students. And I'm in student government, so I saw this. No one else saw this. Um, but I Sorry, said that, can you just clarify what that, that was something that was circulating through what exactly? Okay, so just I'll explain. There were, there were a lot of things going on at NYU that month. So there were swastikas found in a residence hall. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a Black History Month situation where apparently they were serving watermelon and fried chicken. I was not involved. Okay. And um, we, <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> not getting involved. Okay. And um, <laughs> realized Israel had held multiple events because we were just an up and coming group on campus. Right. So the memo read something like this To the minority community, we have been from hell and back for the last couple of weeks from Nazism in our residence halls oh. to racism in our dining halls to Zionism on our campus. And mm. I was like, <laughs> One of these is not like the others, mm -hmm. right? Um, so I, I had sent it to a couple of other Jewish students um, involved outside of Realize Israel, inside of Realize Israel, and um, everyone was like, you know, pretty much like taken aback. It was the first time that we really saw this open anti-Zionism during our time at NYU. So together we said, what should we do? We said, let's craft a letter. So we got, um, of the 17 Jewish clubs on campus, we got 15 of their presidents to sit together and we co-drafted a letter, not angry, mm -hmm. not calling out, but disappointed and explaining why as a Jewish community it's offensive to put Zionism in that category. Mm -hmm. right. um, and everything was ready to go. We were ready to publish. And the night before, I got a call from a mentor of mine who worked for the university and who was in a position of leadership when it came to the Jewish community. And um, he said, hey, you know, I heard about the statement and I heard about this letter. And I said, yeah, we're ready to publish. It's actually really great. And he said, are you sure you want to do that? I said, what do you mean? And he said, well, you know, probably no one read it. The only people who read it were you guys. Like you only saw it because you're on student government. If you draw attention to it, it's just going to get bigger. If you ignore it, it's just going to go away. And I sat and I thought about it for a long time. And I ultimately made the executive decision against the wishes of the other 14 presidents to not publish the letter. Hmm. And I held that back. And over the next four months, NYU became one of the most anti-Semitic campuses in the United States. Um, so I'm just going to do a quick buzz yeah, through. So you because decided not to publish. I decided not to publish, and I'll Evil go back to, to what happened then. Nothing. Yeah, exactly. I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, I decided yeah. not to publish, and then right after that, we had the. <laughs> I'm picturing that, but if you just ignore it. It'll go away. That's literally how <laughs> like it the was. The guy from the office from uh, what's that from uh, Office Space? Office Space. Yeah. Why don't we just? <laughs> it'll, it'll go away. That's how it was. <laughs> No, that's oh, how it was. And, wow. and, and again, this is a moment of, of weakness on my part, yeah. but I wouldn't do it differently and I'll explain why. Yeah, but yeah. Um, ultimately, I don't publish. And then within two weeks, we have a resolution on student government against the NYU Tel Aviv campus. We have a coalition of 53 groups. That's one in every six. Boycotting Realize Israel, the club mm -hmm. that I was president of, as well as Israel, as well as the APAC groups. Um, also including that Hillel is a Zionist organization that should be boycotted. Right. And then after that, we have a group of 70 professors sign a boycott against Israeli academics, Jeez. visiting academics from our Tel Aviv campus. So just like we're getting hit every two weeks, something else. And I'm right. starting well, to meet with administrators. To be fair to you, I mean hindsight's 2020, but mm -hmm. I can understand not out of not out of cowardice, but out of look, do I want to highlight, highlight this, this ugly yeah. thing that's like this disease? like thought mm -hmm. or do I want it to wither away and yeah. there's there's a chance there's a possibility it does yeah I would have done the same thing I think yeah yeah, yeah. Well, that's uh, crazy so now it, 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 the opposite happens the opposite yeah. happens festers and the wound festers, it festers but, but it wasn't festers. because you didn't put the letter out oh it, no but I'll, I'll explain what happened okay. then okay. Um, so at this point we just have resolutions everywhere everyone's mm. boycotting everyone we have clubs dropping our partnership we were going to do a Krav Maga Jiu Jitsu event with the Brazilian mm. Student Association mm -hmm. and they dropped the partnership because they didn't want to be boycotted right it, it mm -hmm. just it got really socially isolating yeah. and it, um, they started posting pictures of Jewish students on social media calling them fascists of the week like it, it doxing. Was just, yeah doxing well, it was not fun if you associated openly with Hillel then you basically wouldn't get student government positions and again I'm meeting with administrators geez. at this point every this? week this is 2018 spring uh. In wow. our day, it was yeah. like people would be crazy yeah. and you'd be like, ooh, shut up. Oh, wait. She's it gets worse. It gets <laughs> worse. I was there in 2016 and there was none of that. Yeah. Well, yeah. 2016, you guys had the eviction notice. Oh, no, no. I was there 2016. 2016 was yeah. dope. That was a good year for it was me. A good that year. was a fun year. That was a fun year. <laughs> Did what I could. Yeah. yeah. That was a good time. Oh, uh, right yeah. I was there, went there for grad school. Because you're a Maryland undergrad, but you went to NYU for yeah, grad school. Yeah, yeah. That's right. I forgot. Yeah. It's a good place. Yeah. 
It was um, a good so place. it gets worse. So it gets yeah, worse. So go. then leading up to Yom Ma'ud, we usually rent out Washington Square Park and we have mm-hmm. this huge Yom Ma'ud <laughs> Israel Independence Day for everyone listening celebration. Mm-hmm. Um, and usually it's like 300 kids in the park wrapped in Israeli flags, you know, singing Hatikva and trees vibrate with energy. And my mom looks at it and she goes, this is Judaism in the 21st century. And it's, it's organized so beautiful. by Realize Israel. By Realize Israel. Yeah. So Realize Israel, rave in the park. Actually, right. we're having the first one this year since COVID. But um, usually it's this beautiful event. And that year I knew it would be protested. Mm-hmm. So I spoke again to administrators. I said I was worried for student safety. Everyone told me I was overreacting. Lo and behold, the event kicks off with an anti-Israel student coming to the front of the protest line with an Israeli flag and lighting it on fire. Mm. Just threw it on the ground and let it burn. Then we had, um, you know, we, we told everyone to just stick to the party, stick to the protest. You know, we're like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Putting out the flag. <laughs> but can you step on a flag to put it? I don't know. Say, what do you do? Weird. Right. Um, but yeah, then bottom line, we had um, another anti-Israel student during Hatikva, during that moment, grab a girl's arm, pull her, yell free Palestine into the microphone. And then they took our 10-foot Israeli flag, tore it to shreds, hung it from trees and from lamppost and then NYPD steps in because of property theft and damage, mm. reckless endangerment, um, and assault, which is a mm. uh, you know physical, yeah. physical mm. tort, which I now know is also criminal. And now mm. I go to law school and I know all these things, which is mm. so lovely. Um, but you know, NYPD steps in, yeah. and um, I, <laughs> yeah, Wild. so I speak to the school and I'm like, look, you can't tell me I'm overreacting. NYPD has stepped in. There's been you know assault. Um, there's been violent action taken against my community. What are you going to do about it? And at this point, the school tells me they're going to take action, but behind the scenes. But your juice. Yeah, that's <laughs> so pretty much how it was. But so your juice. Yeah. Here is my second regret. Yeah. They tell me that they're going to take action behind the scenes, and I trust the school. Um, and everyone tells me all the other Jewish students are like, Adela, that's stupid. The school's not going to do anything. Mm. And I'm like, I'm trusting the school. And um, less than a year later, the school, instead of actually taking action, not mm. only did they not do nothing, they gave an award to Students for Justice in Palestine. They gave them the President's Service Award, which mm. is the highest honor you wow. can get as a club. Jeez. Yeah. Um, at and, that a, point, and a pyrotechnic award. This is just really bizarre. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That is, I find with anti-Semitism is a strange brand of racism that everyone's strange like, brand. yeah. Everyone just seems to just... Forget, relax. They started celebrating. So now suddenly violent actions are not only not alarming, they're being celebrated. They're saying, you know how to win an award at NYU? You're going to pick a minority community. You're going to assault their members. You're going to boycott them. You're going to burn their flags. You're going to get arrested by NYPD. You're going to spend two years harassing them, posting pictures of them on social media, and NYU will say, you are exemplar. Mm -hmm. That's what NYU was saying at Mm -hmm. that moment. And I started thinking about double standards, right? Because had they burned a Mexican flag, which I affiliate with, Mm -hmm. and started chanting no Mexicans at NYU mm. Mexican students have a right to be afraid yeah. and NYU would at least make a statement had they burned an LGBTQ flag yeah. are you telling me NYU would give an award to the group that burned it so do they say no no Zionists or no Israelis no Zionists. they don't say no Zionists. Jews right so that's the difference right I know, I that's know. the difference yeah. and that's I'm, the I'm not saying I support one of them I'm just I yes, know. That is, yeah, that is that's how they explain well, it that is what say, you're saying yeah. no, no that's no, how they explain it it's like saying Sam no Mexicans it's burning the Mexican flag while yelling no illegals because it's uh, it, it's not Mexicans. I'm Mexican. I'm not a. Well, well, what, what would a Mexican nationalist be called? Like uh, a Mexican national? What do you mean? No, no, like, no, like, like a nationalist. Like that's the. Well, this that is part of a larger the, conversation the we had thing. about the tucked about yeah. the claim about obvious, you know, that we talk about a lot. The conversation of anti- is anti-Zionism, anti-Semitism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? How do you define yeah. Zionism? And it, it, it's, it's definitely a confused area for most people yeah. because but I you're not don't... confused about it. Well, I'm, I'm not confused about it because you, you even just asked, right? What would you call a Mexican nationalist? And I would just say a Mexican. Mm-hmm. So uh-huh. why is it suddenly like, the, like the only country that's yeah, questioned see. whether mm-hmm. or not you have a right to believe the country should exist? Is mm-hmm. Israel. And mm-hmm. if you say it's because it was only founded recently, sure, look at any other country. India was founded the same year as NY, as um, Israel through the same treaty with the UN, right? At the same time, look at Pakistan, look at Bangladesh. All of them are newer countries than Israel is. Mm-hmm. And all of those were either fought through treaty or war, and Israel had both. So if any country has a right to exist, it's Israel. So again, You're preaching to the contended. choir. I know. <laughs> yeah? Preaching to the choir. <coughs> but actually, I... No, I no, I mean, I, I'm the choir. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. No, I, I have. We um, had a conversation recently about this, actually. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. We had a private conversation about it, um, and no, I'm, I'm like, t- I not, not that I have to defend myself. I'm like, <laughs> t- no, <laughs> I, I, I do like, know that you know, there's I, a no, line. I'm, I'm totally pro-Israel, but I, li- I listen, I listen to the arguments against mm-hmm. it, and I try to understand where they're coming from, 
and some questions I don't have answers to necessarily. Um, so I want to ask you some of them, actually. Yeah, I'm happy. To, um, happy to I don't have to do it right well, now. I, I, want, to, I want to finish so, the story no, first. I do, should we? I, I like. I, we're in a cool spot here because I actually think this whole thing about the narrative about Israel is where this double standard comes from. Mm-hmm. And I did want to talk about that as a like sort of a macro subject. Do you want to get to the thing first, or yeah, let's we, get to the thing first? Okay, yeah, we can wrap I mean, these it up. people yeah, yeah. they think they're in the thing. You're yeah. not even in the Listen, thing yet. Listen, right? yeah, okay, I just like this. We're keeping people hooked. Thing it's is like so Mr. Good. Oh, and then so we good. talked about the thing, and then yeah, the thing. The thing. Um, so, so this all amounts to basically Jews get no support, no sense of safety, no sense of recognition on campus. Hate towards Jews is completely like you know thrown under the rug, washed over, mm-hmm. glossed over, and. Uh, you're, le- you're left saying, what the hell is with do, this yeah. morally bankrupt administration? Yeah. So at this point, I try to get a meeting with the vice president of NYU, who I'd been meeting with for months before mm-hmm. this, right? And now suddenly, no one takes my calls. I try to call mm-hmm. the other administrators I had met with. No one takes my calls. Their secretaries tell me they're too busy. I physically go to their offices. They tell me they're too busy. Mm-hmm. And finally, they schedule me out for the first week of May, which was the week of my graduation. <laughs> And I said, you can't meet with me sooner. And he said, no, first week of May, I'm very busy. And I said, okay. So I left that room and I got in touch with lawyers and I asked if I had a case against the school. And the lawyer said no. (laughs) (laughs) Because at the time, Title VI of the Civil Rights Act, which holds that every academic institution must keep discrimination from happening and when it does happen, must remedy it from occurring again, Mm -hmm. um, doesn't include religion. It only includes Uh, nationality, ethnicity, and race. And Judaism was, at the time, none of those. Why would it not include religion? Um, That's a great question. I did not draft the civil rights act. Seems like a a glitch. Seems Um, like a glitch there. Seems like a glitch. I mean, saying everyone, that seems like just so second nature today, I guess. Yeah, it's so second nature. It it wasn't the issue of the time. So I I understand. Oh, it's based in like 1960s civil rights. So it's really a racial and ethnic issue. Yeah. And it is. race was not, I mean, religion was not really part of that conversation yeah, religion, at, I mean, like at we, the time. When we, the law, when, when, when the statute was, when it was put into law. Exactly. Like okay. we, we had our situation going on in the background of anti-Semitism because there's always anti-Semitism, but mm-hmm. it wasn't the issue of the moment. And that's why I understand. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not mad about that. But um, essentially I spoke to the lawyers and they're like, send us everything you have. Mm-hmm. And after I did mm-hmm. that, they called me the day after and said, this is the strongest case we've seen. They said, again, you're legally not likely going to win. It was a like civil rights lawyer. Yeah, yeah. Um, Most and people your age and our age at the time would be like, "Yeah, it's crazy at school." They wouldn't, they wouldn't do shit. <laughs> <laughs> they would just be like, "That was a weird party." What up, what's it's crazy. It's, crazy. it's really what's bad. Going on? Anyway, <laughs> even the <this> summer. <laughs> but you yeah. were like, "No." So that's uh, good on you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a unique temperament to have to care enough to do something at that age in in school. Like most people don't don't do anything right about anything. You can have opinions, but. Oh, yeah. most people don't get a pamphlet when they're in fourth grade from NYU yeah. that says it's yeah. a school no, for No, you've leaders. always kind of yeah. had this, you know, yeah. advanced, like, uh, call to action. It was kind of Would like you do moment. that, like, like with what happened tonight if you ordered, like, a $30 salad and they oh only sent you, like, four par- pargiot? Would you also call the restaurant? Can I tell you what I did once? <laughs> <laughs> this is not going the way you wanted it to, but keep going. The no, no, I'm curious. Time, is, it, is it like... The only yeah, time? Yeah. The only time that I actively complained to a manager... Ever, where I even said, like, I want to speak to your boss. And your bo- I pulled a full Karen was. I went to a kosher restaurant in New York, which I will not name, mm-hmm. which is not a fancy restaurant. It's mm-hmm. like a fast, casual restaurant. Like Cosmo, mm-hmm. yeah, keep going. And <laughs> <laughs> they charged me $4.50 for a tea, which is hot water and a bag of Lipton. It wasn't even a fancy tea. No, and they didn't even refill it. Cosmo, it wasn't. Yeah. Should I, I say know, which no, one it was? No, you don't I'm not going to. Okay. I got so upset and I called the waitress because I, we had ordered each um, a salad pitch, and a this tea and it was yeah. just like, I was like, I'm sorry, I, I don't understand. It's four fifty for a tea. She goes, yeah. Kosher like, and Jewy. That's the thing. <laughs> I was very upset and yeah. I called in and I went all the way to the manager because I did not want to pay it. Not, not because of the money, but because of the principal because mm-hmm. they didn't even refill my water and it wasn't even good tea. It's like, right. this is not even two cents. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's no labor into making it. And I Michael, told him, I it's a key little Hashem. all day today. I wasn't going to end by I know. being chef, didn't I? Know. I ended no. on a strong mo- to try to get a <laughs> refund. Call? I called. Ooh. I called because they didn't bring us pita bread for our pre- podcast dinner. <laughs> it was fucked up. And you know what? I'm but better for did. it because I'm not bloated and I'm not burpy on this pod and that's nice and okay. it was guilt free. But mm-hmm. I was like, this is small portions and very expensive prices. And I called and Michael's yeah. like, I'm here. Get no, it. But, but I, I, <laughs> I, usually I, never w- I didn't and I wouldn't have and I also mm-hmm. wouldn't do anything about anti-Semitism on campus. Right. Like, that's no, but not that's my the thing. We're talking about temperament. 
I, oh my God, I went to a, a restaurant once. You're so not I, confrontational like face I'm to not. face. You're not. No, no, no. And so I ordered a salad and I eat dairy out and mm-hmm. I guess I just didn't read right that it came with bacon bits. Mm-hmm. So they bring the salad and I see it has bacon bits. Those are bits. the best mistakes to make though. No. <laughs> I, I didn't eat it. I just looked at it. It's not on you. Wait, what is this? Instead <laughs> of, kick. no, 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 no. No, and I, I smelled it. I smelled it as soon as they put it in front yeah. of me. And instead of being like, oh, I'm sorry, I can't eat bacon. Or instead of ordering something, I straight up said, oh, I'm sorry, I restaurant. have a meeting. <laughs> no. I said, can I get this to go and then I wrapped it to go I gave it to a person on the street and then I went to another restaurant and got a different salad because I don't even know how to send yeah, a salad I, I, back I totally yeah. hear you contact you can yeah. you can confront like the macro issues contextually and feel totally confident but like face to face with a person it's hard it's hard. Well, I mean, you're I don't have trouble face person. to face. I just have trouble face to face when it's about me, when it's about oh. other people. Oh, oh yeah, I will. I will fight uh, for that's you. That's interesting. I'm just I saying, it's like for you. So you, the same you'll gene protect doesn't others. Yeah, oh. you won't. Yeah, like if a school doesn't let me take a test on a different day, I'll be like, oh, like the school didn't let me. But if someone's like, oh, hey, like I have my brother's wedding, I'm like, they're not letting me take the test on a different. Day. I'm like, mm-hmm. I'll right, be there. Right, what can right. I do? I'll advocate for you. Right. And that's why I want to be a lawyer. And that's uh, the difference between activism and advocacy, which we can get to. So you file the lawsuit against school. Do you have anything? Let's let's. Let's circle it back and Let's see if we can get to the thing. We're at the thing. We're at You're the thing. You're gathering materials for a lawsuit. Thing. No, no, yeah, no. No, no, uh, it gets crazier for everyone oh listening. God. Here's the crazy thing. So <laughs> She I, lit the school on fire. No. <laughs> so at this point, I call my mom and I'm